Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about diffuse lighting and the Lambert implementation. And we are also going to learn how to use multiple source lights. Not only that, but we will also learn one way to debug shaders using colors. So let's first see what Godot has implemented. So let's get started. For that, so let's create a new scene, let's instantiate. Uh, world environment let's set it to not mess around with all of our lighting so there you have it and then let's stash it a new mesh instance any mesh and then let's get the material spatial material so that's good uh, implementation Um, default and here we have the diffuse mode so it comes default with the burley but I think Lambert it's way easier to implement and to understand as a beginner so let's start with Lambert first and then move on to the other ones in a, another video so this is the Lambert implementation we're not going to talk about specular mode so let's disable this for now and now if you haven't watched my albedo video, go there to understand why this is full black. But let's now set up a, some lighting for this scene. So, now that we have a directional light, so this is the Lambert implementation um, that Godot provides out of the box. So let's see now how to implement that from scratch ourselves so i'm gonna turn this off and start a new one let's get the same mesh so we can compare and instead of a spatial material let's make it a shader material Okay, and here we go. First, let's save this so it's going to be easier to navigate. Let's call it Lumber Shader. And here we have it. So this is our shader. So first, we need to tell the shader that this is a spatial shader. And now, by default, this will be a blank sphere. But just to make it clear, for educational purpose, let's make it a parameter where we can set up the color of the object. And let's set it to full white. So we can clearly see this sphere is supposed to be white. And now, Let's implement that as the albedo of the object. I just noticed that uh, the sphere is still is already shaded. Um, you may ask why. So the reason is that because we haven't provided any implementation for the for the light. So if we were to do that and change the diffuse light for something else, then then it's not the default implementation anymore. So whatever we put here, it's going to be the new diffuse light. So now that there is an implementation, Godot does not default to, to the Burley, I guess. So now let's make it, let's make it a lumber implementation of this. To make the lumber implementation, let's, let's check online on Wikipedia. How does the lumber works and how we can implement it that from scratch if you go to the wikipedia so this is what you're gonna find you're gonna find a very good explanation of what what this is so i'm not gonna go in depth uh, on that but then there is this formula where you can calculate the reflection of lambert the diffuse reflection is calculated using this formula which means if we implement 
just this, it should be enough to give us exactly the same result as the Godot implementation. So let's just do that now. If we copy and paste the text here so we can guide ourselves, we should be able to achieve what we want. So let's read this. The reflection is calculated by taking the dot product of the surface normal vector. which stands for n in the formula okay so let's get that first like 3 n equals the normal so let's get so this is the surface normal and continue in the normalized light direction vector so let's do that now and in the formula it is the letter l so for that let's call it l and it's going to be the light so who's going to provide the vector for us is good I'm going to tell you how this works in a moment, as soon as we have more lighting in the scene. For now, just keep in mind that this is the direction of the light. This number is then multiplied by the color of the surface and the intensity of the light hitting the surface. Well, we still need the dot product, so we need the dot product of the surface normal in a normalized light direction. So let's move it up and up. So let's get the dot product. We do n dot l. Now that we have this number, this number is then multiplied by the color of the surface. So the color of the surface, let's get that. The color of the surface is the diffuse color, which is the same as the albedo. So let's give it a name. So diffuse light. It's going to be equal to the n dot l times the color of the surface as we said before also known as diffuse color and then we're going to multiply that by the intensity of the light so we need the light color let's get the light color so godot provides that out of the box in the light shader so let's call it light color And then multiply it by the light color. Now that we have the diffuse light, let's change the default diffuse light to be the diffuse light that we just calculated. So let's see how it looks like. You can see here that um, now the amount of light is way stronger than it should be according to Kadu. Let's compare it with the Godot implementation. So this is Godot implementation and this is uh, what it looks like for us. So why is that happening? So this is our implementation, a very basic implementation of a Lambert diffuse algorithm, but we can improve. Um, it's not exactly right and I'm gonna show you why. Although our formula is correct and everything should work, Godot have a different implementation. So let's see why and what we can do to improve and to implement the Lumber implementation correctly in Godot. 
So this is our Lambert implementation and just accounting for the formula. But there are other things that we need to account when we are developing and working with light. So let me show you what I mean. I implemented a debug colors just to show you what it looks like and how you can spot where and what is wrong with this implementation. So let's see what it looks like. Let's just replace our diffuse light implementation with this other one. So this is what we just did. So it was like this. Um, so now let's turn it off and let me show you this. So very briefly what I'm doing here. So here, here you can see the debugging with colors that I implemented to show you or to help spot issues uh, with the colors. So here you can see that when the color is calculated and it's when the color that is calculated is bigger than one, I'm changing it to magenta. You can see here. And when the color that is calculated is lower than zero, then it's changed to green. And also when it's exactly one. I'm accounting for for rounding issues, so that's why I have it in this range. And then you'll be able to see uh, exactly one as blue. Everything else is just the same color and then as here you can see the gradient is just the color that it's supposed to happen. This uses only the blue channel which means that it will only work for full white objects and lighting. Otherwise you're gonna need to change the code to accommodate other scenarios. Okay so here you can see that our Lambert implementation does not account for the fact that we can only show colors between 0 and 1. So here you can see that we're extrapolating uh, 0 and 1 a lot. So there is no negative colors. So we shouldn't show, we shouldn't have anything less than 0 and we cannot show things brighter than 1. So all of this region is just clamped to 1. So let's see how to fix that. We didn't talk about the dot implementation, but this one gives you a value that ranges between minus one and one. So what do we want? We want a clamp any dot L implementation. Here we are clamping the value every negative value is being replaced by zero so we are improving here um, other than that when we have all of these colors or this light beyond one when i was looking into why this is happening i had to look into godot source code to understand the implementation it turns out that godot for some reason multiplies that by the pi uh, at a later stage and because of that, when Godot is implementing the Lambert algorithm, it divides by the pi. So when later down the track, it multiplies by pi, they cancel each other. So let me implement here what I mean. So we're going to need the, the pi constant. So this is the pi constant that Godot uses. And now you can see that we just fix it. So very, very important here. So this is the Godot implementation. The only reason that we are dividing by pi is because Godot somewhere in the source code multiplies by the pi again. I'm going to talk about this more when we talk about other algorithms. But keep this in mind when you are working with shading. With shading, uh, sometimes you need to account for this. Sometimes you need to divide by pi, and sometimes you need to multiply by pi to compensate for this Godot implementation. Uh, and it's not very consistent. You should see this better 
when we start implementing um, other algorithms for diffuse light. Now, let's see what it looks like if we compare to, compare to Godot implementation. So here, see, there is no way to differentiate one of another. So they are exactly the same. Okay, so let's add another source of light so I can show you. Let's add a spotlight. So remember what I just said, that this is what happens when you have multiple lights. Um, Look at that. So here is um, exactly one, and right at here it's extrapolated one, potentially rounding issues. But then if we go back here and start overlapping the lights, you can see that we have that region here again, where the, the light is way too high to be shown in the screen. So what happened is that if we revert the debugging, debugging to the regular one, what happened? So you see that the other light disappeared. So what Godot does, it runs this light fragment shader for every light in the scene. So it did run for the directional light and because the spotlight is the last one, it run for the spotlight. And if you want to accumulate uh, for multiple spotlights, you can do that, but then you need to add. So just keep this in mind when we are when you are working with multiple sources of light. So here you can see that it works fine. It clamping. So it's showing just as full white, but we know that in the code, but we know that here in this spot, it is bigger than one. So keep that in mind when you are, when you are developing or creating shaders because it may impact or have side effects for you. Well, one, one of the issues here is that we are not accounting for the fact that we have attenuation. I'm not going to go to in-depth in here, but I'm not going to go to in-depth in this video, but let's just fix this for now. So what could the implement? It's a, an attenuation of the light source, which should fix, and it does to some extent. Let's just not forget that we are adding the lights, all of the light source together, uh, which means that if we continue and put a lot of lights in the same place, it will go eventually uh, beyond one, and you're still going to have this region where the light needs to be remapped to one. Okay, and, and as you can see, all lights are implementing accordingly the Lambert uh, diffusion algorithm properly, and we can also compare with the other spheres. So this is Godot. You can see here that they do not change. So they are exactly the same one, the same implementation. So that's it for today. I'm going to explore this further in the next video when we talk about the Lambert wrap and um, some issues that Godot have with directional light and spotlights and the way that they divide by pi or multiply by pi. So let's talk about that uh, in the next video. Let me know if you liked and I hope this helps and see you next time.